What's going on, folks? Welcome back to another pandemic in world history. <laughs> what we're going to learn about. Now, <clears throat> while it's a good anniversary today, 1.1 million cases worldwide of the coronavirus, uh, closed cases sitting about 21% of those are casualties, are uh, deaths. <clears throat> Pretty scary. You think, well, we can't go up in that. Well, it's a closed case. It means you're cured, you're walked away, or you're dead. If you still have it, you can, you're still fighting it. So you can't really go on that. Uh, a lot of cases you hear of people fighting it, and they turn for the worst, and then they're flatlined. Um, some make it. It takes a long time to get over this virus. Just like any coronavirus, like the common cold is a coronavirus. Just a different strand. This is a new one. <laughs> so, it's more, yeah, the common cold is more basically of a, it's common. You have a really good chance of fighting it. And that's why it usually takes up to 10 to 2 weeks to get over it. Man, you ever hear people with a common cold? Like, man, I had this for the last week, I can't get over it. Well, guess what? It is part of the coronavirus family. <laughs> Now, and you got to think, that at one time was a new virus and it became part of the whole system of seasonal flus and viruses, right? Now, today we're going to talk about just one plague, and it's a very important plague. Well, all pandemics and plagues are pretty much important in world history because they're all turning points. But this was the ultimate turning point for a lot of things. Now, the plague... Of Cyprian. Now it's named after the Bishop of Carthage, Cyprian. He also wrote a book during that time giving us pretty much a good documentation of what was happening during the pandemic up until he died in 55, 255. Now this plague lasts pretty much from 249 to 262. Okay, 62, 63, A.D. This is all A.D. Now, now it originated around Easter time, according to documents, and it came from a good place called Ethiopia. So, it kind of spread through Ethiopia pretty quick. Now, you got to think about where it origins are very important, okay? I want you to keep in mind, be like, okay, Ethiopia, what could it be? Keep that in mind. You might figure it out. All right. Now, Cyprian, <clears throat> and at the time, Rome's emperor was Dices. Dices. Now, he's an interesting emperor as his own. He's actually pretty much the first emperor in Roman history to actually die on the battlefield fighting invaders. <laughs> Barbarians. Okay, that's just a side note. But he's an interesting character. But, we'll learn more about him, don't worry. Now, he comes to power, about 250. Now, so basically, the plague, this disease, this illness, came from Ethiopia, spread up into Egypt on the Nile. And we all know the Nile is a good trade route. And a commercial route, as much as of, eh, we're going to go on a cruise. This is an Egypt cruise, yeah, let's go for a rip. We're going up the Nile. That would be a rip in the Egypt. So, now this is the 3rd century. Keep this in mind. If you're a Roman historian, you know the 3rd century is a century of crises. It's known as the century of crises for the Roman Empire. And this is the middle of the century, and this is like the icing on the cake. Okay? Now, the disease spreads up through Egypt. Now, many, now, Egypt's a Roman province. Now, Rome's having enough on its plate at this time. So, it spreads towards into the Middle East, and it finds, it pretty much a year, year and a half later, it finds its way to Rome. The city of Rome. At the same time, it's spreading throughout the empire. Now, once it reaches Rome... Emperor Dices basically does an interesting thing. 
okay? He starts putting some decrees out. Now, Rome at this time is in pretty much massive shambles, all right? It's fighting... It's fighting all along its frontiers. It's trying to hold back barbarian hordes, which are constantly probing its frontier for weaknesses. In Mesopotamia, they're still dealing with the Perthian Empire, and they're just attacking out the yin-yang. Okay. Now, now, this becomes very problematic through the Roman Empire. It becomes to the point where, well, persecution is the first thing that comes about. Now, you got to remember, the Roman world at this time is full of pagans and Christians. These are pretty much the two religions. The Roman religion. Now, the emperor decides to say, well, puts out a, out of a decree. Persecution against all Christians caused this plague. Okay? Remember, the ancient world is based on superstition. There's no science to explain where this disease or this plague come from. It came from the heavens. It came from the gods. Okay? Keep that in mind. So, well, and basically, to please the gods, the emperor pretty much put forth a decree to please the gods by Christian blood. Execution on a massive scale. Persecution on such a level that in first time in the history of Christianity, this is pretty an epic scale, okay? Now, a lot of the pagans don't know where to go, what to turn to, okay? Now, Rome has also suffered from floods throughout the empire, suffered from droughts. Uh, man, uh, their treasury is, their economy is in the shits, all right? Now, the last plague, in the Roman Empire was basically just the tip. This plague, Rome's receiving the entire shaft. Alright? They're getting the whole shebang. Now, now when he does issue this decree, he leaves everyone out besides the Jews. The Jews are left out. What? The Jews are left out. Why? Think about the politics, the geopolitics. They're at war with the Corinthians on the eastern frontier. Where's the majority of Jewish people? Israel? Judea at the time? Palestine? Those provinces? Which pretty much border against the Corinthian Empire. Now they started persecuting those. What do you think the Jews are naturally going to do? We're going to sponsor the Corinthians. Hands down 100%. You think... Well, they were getting persecuted and ridiculed and used, abused by the Romans. But still under the protection of Rome, which was still, in their minds, good. So that's why the emperor decided, yeah, persecute the Christians. They don't really have a nation or a big, they're all over the place. All right? Their churches are scattered throughout the eastern Mediterranean and even now into the western Mediterranean throughout the Roman Empire. Now, taxes go up because they've got to pay for the military pretty much exp <laughs> expenditures. So, the, the, a lot of causes a lot of revolts throughout the empire, especially in Gaul, present day France, uh, throughout the Iberian Peninsula, Spain, Portugal, present day. So, the empire is in chaos, it's in shambles, and all of a sudden you start to throw a disease in it. Now, most historians agree that as the symptoms folded out by Cyprian, it's a form of Ebola. Ebola is not new. A lot of people think it is, but it kind of mines a lot of the symptoms of Ebola. It's a form of it. Could have been a strain at the time. Only if they had tins back then. I don't think it would have been that bad in the crisis. In, that, in the 3rd century for Rome. They opened the Thames in Rome. <laughs> now, here's the problem. You might see this a little bit. That's why pandemics are very feared and why the world's acting the way it is because we probably have actually learned something. But, in Rome itself at the peak, 5,000 people a day were dying throughout the empire. That's just in Rome. 
That's just in Rome. That's not throughout the entire empire. They estimate about twenty to 25,000 people died a day throughout the empire. During the, in the peak. The bodies, and Cyprian even said people were stacking the bodies in the streets and they were rotting and decaying. This is the way the pagans lived. Now this is a huge bonus for Christianity. The Christians were getting persecuted on such a scale, especially by the emperor, as you can recall. The emperor was busy too for holding off barbarian hordes out of the Roman frontiers. So, Christians, this is where good Christian mm, principle comes into effect. They were even dying of the illness. But the pagans weren't helping pagans. The Christians really gained a foothold in the rise of Christianity after this plague. And it really took off. They really showed the mark. Killed them with kindness? Well, no pun intended, but they were dead with kindness. So, they were helping the ill. And they were also fulfilling proper burial for the dead of even pagans. And this showed a lot of support for Christianity. Now, the Christians that did die pretty much came into martyr. They became martyrs. They're not saints, okay? Well, Cyprian does become a pretty much a saint in the Catholic Church, but even in the Orthodox Church, okay? So, in his workings, and he was a devoted Christian. Now, in Carthage, he was doing a lot of this. And even the time of being persecuted, Christians were still saying, yeah, we're being persecuted, but we're still going to do what we need to do. Not like Christians today. Christianity today is not like it used to be. It's a joke. Okay? In the face of danger, they still hold the ground. And they died. A lot of them died of this pandemic, during that pandemic. But after the pandemic, especially in the 270s and 280s, Christianity goes right on the fucking skyrocket. Pardon my French. So, it has its implications, right? Despite some pagans didn't care, they were just typical. They were just going out there and persecuting and killing, killing Christians on the altar of the gods just to appease them, to uplift them from this curse, this pagan. This plague that's killing them all. But that never happened. Not so much. Okay, we're just looking at a brief over this. I love to get deeper into this. We could spend days. Uh, this alone, this course, is it's it's about a whole 350 page book <laughs> on this pandemic. Okay? We're just going over the brief ones. Okay. Now, so this disease spreads and it pretty much Havoc's empire for 20 years. Now, the emperors die of the disease. So much political unstability within the empire. There's rivals fighting over who's going to be on the throne. Emperors are pretty much short-lived on the throne during this time. There's no leadership. None. None whatsoever. Um, so, uh, basically what happens to, previously from the r plague before, so, a lot of the people in the countryside flock to the cities. Okay? Now, now you think how... To, now, okay? This happens throughout the empire. Now, you got to remember, the grain basket of the Mediterranean world was Egypt. That's why it only took... It was in... It got to Rome faster than it should because of trade routes. This is something that's actually been talked about how the future is going to be after our current pandemic. How we're going to deal with trade? Well, mm, okay. We know the ancient world trade routes came along with the the dark side of trade routes was disease. It was pretty much the channel for disease to follow. It was easy to spread that way. That's why I got to Rome pretty quick. A lot of grain came from Rome. Now. So, keep that in mind. History is going to repeat itself. So, <clears throat> now if you remember the last plague at Rome, same thing almost happens. 
No. There's not much, nothing really shut down. Okay? Everything was still open. Because the, the entire empire was such in a chaotic state, in turmoil. There was no leadership. There was no order. There was no stability. It was utterly chaos. This actually contributes even further in another step towards the collapse of the Roman Empire. Which is amazing to see in 467. But we'll get there eventually. Another 200 some years of suffering for the Roman people and the empire itself as an entity. Now, the military was in shambles. People were dying. There was not enough manpower. There was not enough money coming in into the treasury to even finance to secure the frontiers. All along the frontier provinces are living in hell. War and disease come at the same time. That's great. Today we're going to wake up. We might get raided by the Gauls. Great. Here comes the Visigoths. That's just great. Here comes the Perthians. That's just great. And the next day, mate, well, we survived that. But the next day you get up, you're sick. It usually only took a couple of days for the sickness to kill you. And uh, I would love to... I don't have the book. I had the book, but not with me. And what Scipion says... How he describes it, it's pretty brutal. Fever, diarrhea, eyes are bleeding from the... This is why they believe it was Ebola. This is one of the symptoms. Internal hemorrhaging. Eyes are bleeding. And you can see why he always said this is the end times. It's the end of the world. We always say that every pandemic. It's the end of the world. But there will be a pandemic that will be the end of the world. Possibly. Then again, when we talk about buying a or Black Death, then you're gonna be like, hmm, I can, I can see that too. Not gonna wipe us out entirely, but it's gonna kill a lot of us human beings. So, lo and behold, so here's more consequences of this pandemic. The Scipion plague also put all the flush of, back to flushing the people into the cities. Now, this really hurt the agricultural industry to the point of zero production in farming. There's no production of food. There, the farmers are dead. There's no one to harvest the fields or to look after them. There's a lot of cases where a lot of fields turn back into swamp. All these people are flooding to the cities looking for help, appeasement, security. But that was the worst thing they could do. Especially when you got 5,000 people dying in Rome a day. These bodies are stacking up. You can imagine the stench. And a lot of scholars at the time that wrote, uh, the stench is unbearable. You can't imagine. There's bodies in the streets that have been there for weeks. Okay? So the dead were. And the Christians are trying to do the rightful thing by burying the dead and giving them their pagan rights at the same time helping them to ease, right? To get into the afterlife in the sense of the pagans, right? And they kind of convert a lot of people to Christianity because of it. Now, after everything's said and done, a massive drought, well, famine happens because there's... Food production is so low. There's there's farms, but no one to farm them. The military is in shambles. Keep that in mind. All these men are dying. If they're not dying by the sword, they're dying by the illness. And Rome goes into a famine. Now, you really experience this in the first couple of years of the plague because grain coming from Egypt, it's economic value shrinks there's not as many shipments because in Egypt a lot of people are dead they're not really farming anymore if they're dead they became fertilizer not even them because you can't bury them <laughs> right so this becomes a very dark days of the Roman Empire and the third century is really dark for the Romans and for the entire Mediterranean world. And this is really teeter point and tipping over. The whole thing's tipping over. The whole empire's going to collapse. Its frontiers are unfolding with more and more within it. 
the internal bad enough they had external problems coming into the empire they couldn't manage I like to compare an empire to the human body okay this is just a side note this is how I look at the world get a little bit of look how I look at things but an empire is the same thing as your body there's external forces and internal forces now all the time you are constantly plagued by external forces bacteria uh, injuries <laughs> Self-inflicted, maybe. Not so self-inflicted. Uh, bacteria. All this, okay? Your war is, your body's constantly at war. Okay? Right now, your body is fighting something in your body. You don't feel the effects because pff, it already knows it. Your body knows the art of war. First rule of thumb, know thy enemy, and I know you already. Sheep. Don't think so. You're not going any farther. And then stop them in your lungs or anything like that, right? Digestive tract, or if you get a cut, right? So it's just like an empire, okay? And it's an entity, right? It's a polity. Your body is almost like an entity or polity. Now, after a while, if you have a lot of stress, which is internal, it affects your internal immune system. You know, you don't eat much, you don't got much nutrition, it affects you. Why do you get sick? Eternal forces have a way to get in real easy. Oh, he's weak. Go, 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 go. Same as the Huns going to the Roman Empire. Time to attack. They're weak on the inside. Start probing. Go. No, we're good. Let's keep going. It's the same thing. This is how I look at a lot of things. You can compare anything to anything. It's the same thing. So pretty much your economy, yeah. You're pretty much your, um, your manpower is your immune system. Your immune system's collapsed, it's weakened. Anything from the outside can easily come inside. And now if it's a new enemy, we're gonna look at a few episodes in history where it's a new enemy and your body's in the same thing as the coronavirus. It's a new enemy, never recognized it before. It's a different way of uh, everything. So your body's like, huh, that's why, that's why it gets defeated. It's like the Russians and the Germans in the first, second world war. It took a while for the Russians to realize German tactics. And, so, and almost came close to oblivion. Almost flatlined the entire Soviet Union. But then they realized, ah, oh, oh, we're starting to get it. We're using their own tactics back. Push them back. And they won, right? Sum it up in a nutshell. But um, back to the Scipion Plague, it's the same thing. This is thing that comes from the external empire into the empire. And it had to... The empire already could not withstand an illness. It had political stability, economic uncertainty, plagues, well, diseases, illness, typical. But you had your famines and your floods, your, <laughs> your military disasters, which could become financial disasters, an economic crisis. Then all of a sudden, right on top of all that, let's throw in a pandemic. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. No leadership. It's like put a, a bullet in your brain. No leadership. Everything just shuts down. Everything just goes bleh. That's pretty much what happened. And that's pretty much a sum of the overview of this sapien plague. Okay? And I would love to get more into it, but these are just... These are just spare the moment videos on these and the next one I'm going to do is my second favorite of all time in history is the Justinian plague there's a lot of pl okay that's my next one I'm going to discuss I could I'm going to discuss a lot of the Justinian plague uh because it's one of my favorites because Byzantine Byzantine history is one of my areas because it's part of Eastern European history and uh the Byzantine Empire I know a lot about the Roman Empire but the Byzantine Empire who I know just as much. And uh, there's a lot of books on the Byzantine Empire. But there is a really good one out there. It's called Justinian's Flea. Um, flea, like flea. On your cats and dogs. Flea, the insect. Right? Uh, it's a really good book. Uh, it's, it's really on the Justinian plague during that time of everything. It's about this thick. Uh, well, 
Yeah, but that thick. It's a really thick book. And uh, the guy, a really good book. Recommend you read it. Especially if you're into pandemics. Um, it talks about everything that I wish I could talk about, but it would take hours and hours and days and days. It would be a whole seminar course for four months. Okay. Actually, it is in school. <laughs> so, um, Byzantine history. It's, it's pretty much a full year course. Uh, and even then, at the end of the course, they'll tell you, you just learned a fraction. <laughs> Yay. But, that's a pretty much that. That's the Cyprian Plague, okay? From 249 to 262. The next major big plague that affects the world, we're going to talk about next time, is my second favorite once more, is the Justinian Plague. Or the Plague of Justinian. And that one is a tuberculosis. It's a typhoid. Typhoid spread by lice. Keep that in mind. Uh, is it Ebola? Is it smallpox? You're going to see what this one is. And what you can easily find out. <laughs> you know, welcome to the modern age. Mm. But that's pretty much the end of that. Pretty sum that up in a nutshell. But you got to remember, keep note. And I'm trying to remember some of the stuff because this is all going to tie in to the last episode I do on pandemics. Um, this is all going to tie in one of today. I want you to use everything you know about these plagues and pandemics that affected the world and apply them to today. Do you see any similarities? The job is starting to see similarities, differences, connections, compare, contrast. These are all things that a historian needs to do. And you got to see also the ability to see a pattern. What connects, just like a criminal investigator, what connects all these victims? What connects all these pandemics into a single thing? What, what makes them the same? What makes them all related? Okay. So this is, that's why when you're a historian, if you're a person that's into criminal investigation and crime movies... You're basically a historian too, but just a little harder. Yeah, you think, well, it's a little less something than a bloody knife. Those people only can deal with one murderer. A historian can deal with millions of murderers and millions of deaths. So there's the difference. If you only can do that, I only can do one at a time. Well, be a criminal investigator. If you can do a lot more than like 10 times as that, over a course of centuries, you're a historian. Now, judged by that, we'll wrap that up. And um, until next time, we're going to talk about the Justinian Plague. Uh, same thing, if you comment, um, go ahead. I don't expect anybody to. Um, I, I don't expect anybody to go right to the end. So uh, Let's put it this way. Here's a good theory of the test to see if you actually went through the whole video and watched it. Um, right? You know, there's a lot of things you could say, right? <laughs> I'm not going to do this time. Oh, by the way, I'm all for Trudeau. <laughs> I, I, I can't say that. It's a bunch of load of shit. It's a load of crock. No. But until next time, which will be soon, I'm going to do a whole thing on the Justinian Plague, which is my third favorite plague of antiquity, or antiquity. <laughs> uh, I love that word, antiquity. And I uh, can never pronounce it, antiquity. Man, I can never say that word. If you know, if you want to watch the whole video, then you make fun of me at the end. Now, so, that's pretty much that sums up. Until next time, stay safe. And we'll learn about another pandemic. Eh, take notes, whatever you need. Comment, like, whatever. But this ain't just for me. I'm keeping these for my daughter. Give me an idea. Give her an idea of what her dad's like. And well, it was like, right? So keep that in mind. And take care. Until next time.